k-means works great on these toy data sets. But when it comes to real world data sets, it has a lot of problems. It cannot handle noise or overlapping clusters and only works really well when the clusters are globular. To solve these issues, we need a more robust algorithm and one of those is Gaussian mixture models. To understand the Gaussian mixture model, we first have to understand the Gaussian distribution or the famous bell curve. To describe a bell curve, you need two things. One is its mean around which the distribution is centered and the other one is its variance, which describes how sharp or flat the bell curve is. These two quantities are usually denoted using the Greek letters mu and sigma. Once you have these two, you can pick any point on this line and this equation will give you the likelihood of that point coming out of this Gaussian distribution. The closer you sample from the mean, the higher the likelihood. You can also have bell curves in more than one dimension. In this case, the mean would be represented by a vector with one mean for each dimension and sigma would be represented by a matrix containing pairwise variances for each dimension. Equation for computing likelihood remains the same, except simple multiplications are replaced by matrix multiplications. If these equations seem too complicated, don't worry, we will be using pre-built implementations, so we don't have to implement them. Finally, let's talk about the Gaussian mixture model. Just like any other clustering algorithm, GMM is also iterative and it has two steps, the assignment step and an update step. In the assignment step, during the first iteration, we randomly initialize our Gaussians, just the way we initialize centroids and k-means. Now for each point, we will compute its likelihood for coming from one of these Gaussians. Points far from the Gaussians will have low likelihood but the point closer to its center will have a high likelihood. Then during the update step, we convert these likelihoods to weights by dividing each likelihood vector by its sum. Then based on these weights, we can adjust the mu and sigma for our Gaussians, which in turn will adjust its position. The assignment step is referred to as expectation and the update step is also called maximization. And the whole algorithm is called expectation maximization or EM in short. Now let's jump into code and implement GMM in Python. First of all, we'll have to import all of our dependencies. We'll import the random library for initialization, NumPy for some calculations, and SciPy is multivariate normal for computing the values of those Gaussian equations we saw earlier. Now let's define our main GMM class, which we will initialize with two values, k and max iter. k being the number of clusters we are expecting and max iter being the number of times we will run our expectation maximization algorithm. Now we can initialize our Gaussians. Let's first initialize two variables for the number of points that we have and the number of dimensions in our data set. Now let's initialize the weights and pick random mu and sigma values for each of our k clusters. Now we can define the fit method, which is going to be our main method. In this, we will initialize our Gaussians and then run the expectation maximization algorithm max iter times. Next, let's define our EM algorithm. First, the expectation step in which we will get the likelihood of each point being associated with a Gaussian. Let's call this weights and then we will scale these weights by dividing it with its sum. Let's call that phi. Then during the maximization step, we will set up a loop to go over all the k Gaussians we had initialized and then update the mu and sigma of each Gaussian based on the weights we found during the expectation step. Now we can define our predict proba method which we used to compute the likelihood during the expectation step. In this method we will initialize the likelihoods as zeros 
and then for each mu and sigma create a Gaussian distribution using SciPy's multivariate normal method. Then we get the likelihood using the PDF method of this distribution and update our likelihood variable accordingly. And then lastly, we scale these likelihoods by first taking a dot product with the phi vector and then dividing it by its sum. Now our GMM class is ready to be used. Let's initialize it with k equals 2 and max it as 100. Let's also generate some data to try it out. As we can see in this data, it comes from two Gaussians. Let's see if we are able to cluster it. Let's call our main fit method to cluster it and then calculate the probabilities for each point using the predict proba method. We will plot our data again, but this time use probabilities to color the data points. As we can see, it is not only able to cluster the points, but also gray out the points it is uncertain about as they are equally likely to have come from either of the two Gaussians. Reason why Gaussian mixture models work so well in production is because bell curve can be found everywhere. Distribution of height worldwide is Gaussian. Distribution of BMI index is Gaussian. World income distribution is Gaussian. Even the distribution of pizza delivery times is Gaussian. So why don't you try GMM on your own data?